Finally tonight on Grief and a Morning Out on the Water, a conversation I had recently with author Roger Rosenblatt. Two and a half years after our 38-year-old daughter Amy died of an undetected anomalous right coronary artery, I have taken up kayaking. That's the first line of a new book titled Kayak Morning, Reflections on Love, Grief, and Small Boats. Its author is Roger Rosenblatt, long known, of course, to NewsHour viewers for his essays over many years on the program, and among other books, for his memoir, Making Toast, about his and his family's first days and weeks after the death of his daughter. And Roger, welcome back. Thank you. Making Toast, I remember when we talked about it, was partly about the ordinary things, about what happens right away, the making toast for your grandchildren. This, two years later, is more of a personal meditation. What, what, what happened? Well, for one thing, it was a way of getting my daughter back. When I was writing about Amy and making toast, it was a way of keeping her alive. I could keep her alive for as long as I wrote the book. And then I felt a letdown once the book came out. And, um, and I guess I just took up kayaking because it came, I'm a loner um, by nature, and um, it's probably the only sport at my age I can play anyway or take up. Um, so I didn't really go out in the kayak with thinking I was going to write a book or even organize some thoughts. But eventually, when I was out there, I realized what a good place it was to feel uh, secluded, uh, solitary, and in touch with something. And I needed to be in touch with something because I wanted to understand the nature of grief. The kayak, of course, because we've talked about writing here, too, the kayak is a kind of metaphor that you can get in, right, and paddle about. You can and it has its own strange rules. Exactly right. It, you can stay in it like a noun. It is the thing itself, <laughs> you know. And since I talk about writing with precision and restraint, which I believe and which I admire, um, you cannot uh, go wild in a kayak. You have to paddle a kayak with precision and restraint. In fact, you say when it's tipping over, you have to act counterintuitively. Yes. Uh, you go in the direction that you cannot believe will save you, and it's the only direction in which you will be saved. So the, 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 the kayak morning, you're out on its Pe Penniman's Creek, right, off of Long Island, groping for something. Understanding, uh, ter coming to terms with grief, what? Yeah, I'm, I, actually, I made it quite specific, and I developed a conversation, as you know, through, in the book, throughout with a therapist, uh, in which she says, finally, with some slight irritation, what do you want? And I say, I want her back. And then she says, quite wisely, then you'll have to find a way to get her back. And the little voyage I take in the kayak is a way to try to get my daughter back. But uh, you, you in all, my terms. In your terms. But your terms always have involved words. And there's another line where you write here, old words or new, now they do not help. I had believed otherwise. It's true. Um, when you lead a literary life and see, <laughs> you see life through a book darkly, then you begin to think that words will do everything for you. But um, as many people know, and this book is not for me, it's for everybody who grieves. I, there's a line in there, everybody grieves. Uh, for those who have been felled by one instance or another in which grief is the logical consequence, then words can't be enough. You have to figure out how to live in the world or how to paddle in the world or how to move about and be useful to people and useful to yourself. And so this tiny little voyage in this creek is an effort to do that. Speaking of everybody grieves, uh, you, you do go back here to your own experiences, reporting experiences around the world, to some horrific things you've seen through the years. And it's not so much comparing tragedies, I guess, but looking at the impact of, 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 of death. And you, you know, Jeff, I cannot tell you why my mind went to these places. I think it was an idea of a proportion. Uh, I had lost my daughter. Yes, uh, it brought us to our knees, and then we stood up again. In Rwanda, we saw hundreds of thousands killed. In Sudan, thousands killed. In Beirut, in Belfast, and other when I was doing reporting in those areas. I think my mind was saying in a kind of indirect way, uh, this is the way the world turns. Uh, there's great sadness in it, and it's a question of how you live in the world in which there is sadness, not just your sadness, everyone's. I was distanced. I wanted to write a story about something. The story I wanted to write was about somebody's grief. Now, when it's your own grief, um, you begin to understand the, the depth of it and, frankly, the desire for silence. One of the real great advantages of being out in a kayak is it's very, very quiet. You said this is a part for other people. Are you 
surprised by the stages because we started talking about making toast and what that was like, what that was about, to now. Are you surprised by the, the, the path individually that you've had to go through and are there lessons for other people? I hope there are lessons for other people. Um, I hope it is a useful book for other people. I wasn't aware of particular stages. I think I was, uh, there was a wonderful review in the, the Sunday Times and um, the woman who wrote the review caught what I wanted people to catch, that I wasn't really going anywhere. It was the journey itself, just going around. That was the issue. And I land you on... You mean literally the, the kayak isn't really going anywhere. The kayak and, doesn't. I, and, and you in your own mind, right? Exactly. Yeah. I'd, I'd go to the end to the, where the creek uh, empties into the canal, turn around, go back and keep going around. But in that going around, which is what people do, you learn something of yourself, something where you are in the world, um, and the great sympathy for the world. There is one a quotation from Philo in this book that uh, strikes me as useful for everyone. Be kind, he said, for everyone you meet is carrying a great burden. Be kind for everyone you meet is carrying a great burden. All right, the book is Kayak Morning, Reflections on Love, Grief, and Small Boats. Roger Rosenblatt, thanks so much. Thank you, Jeff.